And so far with our video from last time, we had 12 exact value points at 30 degree reference angle, 45 degree, and 60 degree reference angle. But really when it comes to the unit circle, there are an infinite number of points on the unit circle. As long as they satisfy this equation, they are on the unit circle and they have coordinates x coordinate being cosine of the angle and y being sine of the angles. So what we're going to do is to the 12 angles we've already done, we're going to add four more with our quadrantal angles. So hopefully you remember from 20-1 that quadrantal angles are angles on the unit circle. So I can see all the way around here on the unit circle, these points here, they all have a radius of one. So let's look at zero. The radius of one means it hits the unit circle at a positive x-intercept. So that means the coordinates are one and zero. 90 degrees hits the unit circle at a positive y-intercept. So the coordinates are zero and one. At 180 degrees with a radius of one, it hits the unit circle at a negative x-intercept. So it'll be negative one and zero. And at 270 degrees, it hits the unit circle at a negative y-intercept, so it has coordinates of 0 and negative 1. So we can do the same thing we did before for these four points, looking at the sine, cosine, and tangent of all those angles. So let's look at cosine of the angle first. Cosine of the angle, of course, being the x-coordinate. So I know that cosine of 0 is 1, cosine of 90 is 0, cosine of 180 is negative 1, and cosine of 270 is 0. Let's look at sine, which is the y-coordinate. So looking at sine, I have that sine of 180 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, and sine of 270 is negative 1. Let's look at the tangent, and tangent, of course, is the ratio of your y-coordinate over your x-coordinate. So let's look at 10 of 0. That's going to be y over x, which is 0. 10 of 90 degrees is going to be 1 over 0, which of course we can't divide by 0, so that tangent of 90 degrees does not exist. Tangent of 180 will be 0 over negative 1, which is just 0. And 10 of 270 will be negative 1 over 0. We can't divide by 0. So that means the tan of 270 does not exist. So now we have four new points. And we have with sine, cosine, and tangent, 12 new ratios. So 16 points on the unit circle, sine, cosine, and tangent means we have 48 exact value ratios that we can figure out. So let's go through this table around the unit circle for each of our special reference angles and find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So starting at zero degrees, we said it was one and zero. So again, to recap, the x coordinate is our cosine value of one. Our y coordinate of zero is our sine coordinate and zero divided by one is just zero. So that's for zero degrees. For 30 degrees, 30 degrees has an x coordinate of root three over two. So root three over two is my cosine value. And then my sine value is my y coordinate, which is one half. My tangent is the ratio of the numerator. Numerator of y over numerator of x. So one over root three, that will be my tangent. Now I'm going to use my reference angle of 30 degrees and I'm going to place it in the other quadrants. So I know between 120 and 180, this is quadrant number two, where my coordinates are negative positive. Between 210 and 270 is quadrant number three, where the coordinates are negative negative. And between 300 back up to 360, this is quadrant number four, where the points are negative and positive sorry, positive and negative. So if I look at this 30 degree angle, so cosine is root three over two, so in quadrant number two, it will be negative, and sine is a half, in quadrant number two, it'll be positive. Going down to quadrant number three with the reference angle of 30 degrees, I should expect to see negative, negative. And in quadrant number four, the reference angle of 30 should be positive and negative. So see, you just need the points in quadrant number one and place them in the other quadrants. Okay, let's look at the tangent. Tangent is the ratio of y over x, so 1 over negative root 3. Over here, negative 1 over negative root 3, two negatives make a positive. And over here, negative 1 over root 3 would be your tangent ratio. Okay, so back up to 45 degrees in quadrant number 1. This one right here has a coordinate of root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. 
So my cosine is root 2 over 2, and my sine is also root 2 over 2. So let's place that around the unit circle. So reference angle of 45 degrees in quadrant number 2, it should be negative positive. Reference angle of 45 degrees in quadrant 3 should be negative negative. And reference angle in quadrant 4 should be positive and negative. Let's look at the tangents now. So tangent, numerator of y over numerator of x. So 2 root 2 over root 2 is just positive 1. Over here, root 2 over negative root 2, negative 1 because a positive divided by a negative. In quadrant number 3, dividing those, negative root 2 over negative root 2, positive 1 because two negatives make a positive. And in quadrant number 4, a negative root 2 over a positive root 2 should be a negative 1. Okay, back up to quadrant number 1, looking at a 60 degree. So 60 degree, my reference angle is a half and root 3 over 2. So that means the cosine of 60 degrees is a half and sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. So we can place that in the other quadrants as well. So with the reference angle of 60 degrees, I will see a negative and a positive. With the reference angle of 60 degrees in quadrant 3, negative and negative. And a reference angle of 60 degrees. Oh, I have those backwards. 60 degrees here is root 3 over 2 and a half positive negative. So this was for the 30 degree. I clicked the wrong one. My apologies. Okay, so let's go back up here and do our tangent. So y over x, root 3 over 1, and that will be root 3. In quadrant number 2, root 3 over negative 1 will be a negative. And then this one here we've already done, I did that with 30 degrees by accident. So that's the um, positive 1 over root 3 because two negatives make a positive. So this would be for 30 degrees. And then this one here was for 60 degrees. We just did that one. So for 30 degrees, negative root 3 over 1 would be a negative 3. So I clicked off the wrong ones. I'm sorry. Okay, so all we have left is our quadrantal angles. So for 90 degrees up here, 0 and 1. So that means that cosine of 90 is 0 and sine of 90 is 1. And 1 over 0, you can't divide by 0, so that does not exist. Okay, at 180, we have coordinates of negative 1 and 0. And for tangent, 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. At 270, we have coordinates of 0 and negative 1. So negative 1 over 0 does not exist, can't divide by 0. And to bring us back to the end of the unit circle, coordinates of 1 and 0, and the ratio of that would be 0. So something I want you to note about tangent, tangent is the ratio of sine over cosine. So anytime sine is 0, tan will be 0. So if we look here, sine was 0, tan was 0. Sine was 0, tan was 0. Up here, sine was 0 and tan was 0. And since we're dividing by cosine, anytime cosine equals 0, then tan does not exist. So you can see here, cosine was 0, tan does not exist. Cosine was 0, tan does not exist. So that's something we can kind of keep in the back of our minds when it comes to tangent. So all together here we have our unit circle with degrees and radians and looking at this I noticed that the unit circle follows the cast rule. So looking at the cast rule, let's just review that. Cast rule, C-A-S-T. So A stands for all. All of the ratios in this quadrant are positive because both x and y, sine and cosine, are positive. In quadrant number two, s stands for sine. So only sine is positive because only the y coordinate is positive. In quadrant number three, t stands for tangent. Sine and cosine, you can see, are both negative, and tan is the ratio, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. In this quadrant here, quadrant 4, you see it stands for C, which is cosine because the X coordinate is positive. So only cosine is positive in this quadrant. So the cast rule applies to the unit circle as well. Now, in that unit circle, I labeled all the radians. And if we go back here, let's just mention here. So to label all the radians, what I could do is I could do degrees to radians as we did in 4.1. So for example, 30 degrees becomes pi over 6 because to change to radians, we put pi on top. So I would say to you on your calculator, I want you to take pi out and put pi back. So you would do 30 times 1 divided by 180 in lowest terms is 1 over 6. 
and then I would just ask you to put pi back. So I want to show you how you guys can do these on your graphing calculator. So I have all the steps here for you, but I'm going to, going to show you how I do that so you can visually see how to do that. So the steps are all in your notes, but here's what we do. So we go into our calculator. The first thing I want to do is make sure that we're in degree mode. We're going to go from degrees to radians. So I'm going to enter all degrees in. So I'm going to go into a part of my calculator that is a spreadsheet. So if I hit stat, which is just to the left of the arrows, and I go to edit, you can see here we have a spreadsheet. So I've already listed things in list one. Yours should be empty. So what I want you to do is I want you to put all your degrees. These are all our reference angles, our, our 16 nice points. 17 if you start at zero and end at 360. So I have 17 points in here. So just going down, I've, I've put all of these in my calculator. I entered the numbers and I can press enter to get to the next line. So 0, 30, 45, 60, 90 in quadrant one. 120, 135, 150, 180 in quadrant 2, 210, 225, 240, 270 in quadrant 3, 300, 315, 330, and 360 in quadrant 4. So that's the only tedious part is entering them all in. I want to go over to list 2 and what I'm going to do is populate list 2 with all the radians that go with it. And to do that I want to come up to where my list two is. So see how list two is highlighted and down here we have what's called a formula bar so we can enter in a formula. So to convert degrees to radians, we're going two radians, we would multiply by pi over 180. But I told you when you go into your calculator you take pi out and then you put pi back after you've done it. So I want to take all of the numbers in list one. So see above the number one there there's a list one. So I'm going to go second one and that's list one. I'm going to take all my numbers on list one and I'm going to divide them by 180 and I want to turn them into a fraction. So I divide by 180 and then I go math fraction and so what I'm doing is taking all the numbers in list one, dividing by 180 and putting them into a fraction and then I can put pi back. So press enter and now you've got all the fractions. So what you really have is, for example, 45 degrees is, put pi back, pi over 4. And you can go down and the entire unit circle in degrees is listed here. For example, 150, put pi back, 5 pi over 6. So I think that's a pretty handy uh, tip. So you have everything all there. And here's everything that I have. So going around the unit circle, I can now add in pi's for everything. And this is a nice quick way of developing degrees to radians. You of course can use the formula if you would prefer, but I think this is a nice quick way of doing it so that you can look and see what any degree to radian conversion is. So there's all of my conversions there. So I took pi out and then of course I put pi back. Let's look at another way of doing that. So I want to look at my unit circle. So you've already seen how you can do it on your graphing calculator. You already know that you can convert these from degrees to radians using the formula, but I want to show you an alternate way. So first thing is we are dealing with numerators of 3, 4, and 6. So from my y-axis, I go out and do 3, 4, and 6. From my y-axis, 3, 4, and 6. Same thing on the bottom half. From my y-axis, I go 3, 4, and 6, 3, 4, and 6. My denominators will always be 3, 4, and 6 because they correspond to the reference angles. So 30 degrees has a reference angle of pi over 6. So remember, 3 doesn't go with 3, it actually goes with 6. That's how I remember it. 45 degrees goes with 4. So that's why they're all out of four. And 60 degrees goes with three. So 60 doesn't go with six, it goes with three. So three and six, four with four, and six with three. It's the six and the three that are backwards. So if you can memorize that, that would be useful. Now, how do we come up with the numerators? Well, the numerators in quadrant number one are just one pi, because they're just the reference angle, one pi. Let's look in quadrant number two. If I go in quadrant number two, I almost go to pi, but I'm less than pi. So my numerator is one less than the denominator. So one less than six is five pi. One less than four is three pi. 
1 less than 3 is 2 pi. Okay, in the next one, in quadrant number 3, I've gone from 0 to pi, and I'm more than pi. So since I'm more than pi, my numerator will be 1 more than my denominator. So 1 more than 6, 7. 1 more than 4 is 5 pi. 1 more than 3 is 4 pi. And then lastly, in quadrant number 4, if I'm starting from 0, I've almost gone to 2 pi, double pi, but I'm less than double pi. So my numerator will be double 1 less. So double 3 is 6, 1 less is 5 pi. Double 4 is 8, 1 less is 7 pi. Double 6 is 12, 1 less is 11 pi. So that's a quick little way that you can memorize how the degrees and the radians go. One less, one more, and double one less with denominators of 3, 4, 6 in either direction from the y-axis. So if we put this all together here, we have coordinates on the unit circle are x and y, where x is the cosine of the angle and y is the sine of the angle. We have three reference angles, and using those, we can create other angles in quadrants 2, 3, and 4. The absolute value of those ratios stays the same. We just have to place it correctly in the quadrant with the signs. So really, all we have to do is memorize quadrant number 1, and then we can place them in quadrant 2, 3, and 4 using the sign rules in that quadrant. So let's talk about how we can memorize quadrant number 1. So I want you to notice a few things. First of all, all the denominators are 2, all the numerators are roots. So it looks like they all are, except for those quadrantal angles. I don't have those as roots, and I don't have the denominator as 2. But I can easily write them so that they all have a denominator of 2. So 1 is really the same as root 4 over 2, because root 4 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. 0 is really root 0 over 2. So I can say the same thing up here for 90 degrees. I can also say the same thing for my 1, because this is just root 1, and this is root 1. So now that they are all denominators are 2, and all the numerators are roots, watch what happens with my x-coordinates. So if I look at my x-coordinate, which is root 4 over 2, it goes 4, 3, 2, 1, none. So my x-coordinates are decreasing. Let's look at what happens with my y-coordinates. My y-coordinates go 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So all of my y-coordinates are increasing. Now, you don't really have to use the roots on the quadrantal angles to see that, because if you look at your x-coordinate of 1 and your x-coordinate of 0, I'm going from 0 to 1. I'm getting smaller. Similarly, if I look at my y-coordinate of 0 and my y-coordinate of 1, to go from 0 to 1, I'm getting bigger. Okay, so either way that you want to memorize it, I think that that helps me anyway to go, my x-coordinates are going smaller, 3, 2, 1, and my y-coordinates are going bigger, 3, 2, 1. So to summarize the lesson here, there are infinite number of points on the unit circle. They all satisfy this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So far, we have 16 points on the unit circle. And with sine, cosine, and tangent, we can do 48 exact value, exact value meaning no decimal, ratios. Remember that trick for the radians? If you want to go from degrees or radians, all you have to do is have denominators of 3, 4, or 6 going from the y-axis, and then it's just one less, one more, and double one less. So for this math joke today, I have a good math-inspired pickup line for you. Guy says to the girl, hey, what's your sign? It must be pi over 2 because you are the 1. Get it? Sine of pi over 2 equals 1. Well, I know this joke is good because it is Sheldon Cooper approved. He also thinks it is a brilliant joke.